Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome, missed you, thinking about you, hoping you're doing well. If you're new, bonjour. Before we jump into the market today, I just want to show you that, hey, 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 it's not working. Oh, hey, I won. I won in the raffle. They had um, 9,261.98 Ethereum in the raffle. I think it was uh, 0.08 per. Don't quote me on it. I believe that's what it was. And I got one ticket, so I got one, or and I'll show a picture of that at some point. But back into the market, markets look a little bit, a little bit better. It's been trending down, I would say, the past couple of days. It's you know um, not been the best. The news we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later in the week, but the debacle with debacle debacle with uh walmart and litecoin so but how's litecoin doing now it's at 180 i think it had popped up to like <laughs> 230 um earlier on the news that walmart was going to be using litecoin but it was a lie or who knows what we'll find out what the truth was but it doesn't appear to be walmart uh, retracted that quickly so we won't sit there and belabor the point. Let's get into today's news. I mean, well, not straight into the news. Let's look a little bit at the market. Bitcoin at 45,000. Uh, Ethereum at 3,300. at 3,200. Now it's bouncing up a little bit today. You see, they've been down about 15, 19% on the week. Cardano at two, $2.41. Binance Coin at four hundred dollars, almost even twenty two cents. XRP at a dollar oh seven. Solana one sixty nine forty four. It seems like it's I won't say it lost its cape, but is now you know tr tracking with everything else normally. Uh, Doge at twenty three cents. It's quickly Algorand. We'll come into that later, but it, it had a great week. You see, it's up forty nine percent on the week. Two dollars and sixteen cents. Uh, I don't talk about ETH Classic, you know, Ethereum Classic. That's a story for another day, but $56 is doing well. I had a, some friend made some money on ETH Classic this year. I'm sure he's happy about that. And the Cardano, you know, the Alonzo hard fork went live and the market hasn't collapsed, at least for it. So let's see. Stock market today, Dow, just a little 0.76% increase, S&P 0.23%. NASDAQ, very tiny decrease at 0.07%. So not too much of a move today. It's been a quiet today on the a, on a market. Everything, a little bit in the green here, except for Amazon, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson. Here on these, investing in the top, looking at these 30. But, you know, pretty pretty quiet day in the market. How much ETH is burned, I always keep updating it. If, if Ethereum was just a little bit more... Expensive right now, probably over a billion. So we'll just look at that number. 288,874 Ethereum has been burned. That is going to hit the market at some point where it's going to be a shock to the system. So hear about that positivity. And then that includes, and it's been raining here, so you may hear some noises in the background. You know, you know look deep into yourself and say, those days when I was lost, when if I was a variant in a, in a, in another reality, which would turn would I have taken and gone off the, the the wrong path and you know collapsed my universe? And this is stuff from the Marvel television series Loki and What If, if you haven't been watching. But who was there for me? Who was my rock? Who who guided me into a place where? I was able to be someone that was able to watch YouTube videos. <laughs> that person, think about them, find them deep within yourself. Look down into your comment section of whatever you're watching this on, type them a message, then forward them this video and say, hey, look what I wrote about you. Something, something important 
to me for you for for my acknowledgement of you to last throughout eternity and you know hey go about your business so with that we are going to roll into scary times i mentioned this quickly i think it was about the kamala kamala i'll be butchering her name and and just because i don't hey she's been quiet as the uh vice president this (laughs) people try to attack her but you haven't seen anything about her um kamala 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 it's kamala i'm butchering her kamala harris our vice president when her they're going to mention here in this article about when they were about to take that trip to vietnam but let's get a little bit deeper into i'm not going to read the whole article i recommend you go look at bbc but um bbc news the i'll go into some of it doctors scientists and intelligence agents and government officials have been trying to find out what causes havana syndrome a mysterious illness that has struck american diplomat and spies some call it an act of war others wonder if some new and secret form of surveillance and some people believe it could even be all in the mind so who or what is responsible it often starts with a sound one that people struggle to describe buzzing grinding metal piercing squeals was the best they could manage one woman described a low hum and pre- intense pressure in her skull another felt a pulse of pain those who did not hear a sound felt heat or pressure but for those who heard the sound covering their ears made no difference some of the people who experienced the syndrome were left with dizziness and fatigue for months havana syndrome first emerged in cuba in 2016 first cases were cia officers which meant they were kept secret so boom i mean it sounds like almost like the beginning of a of a of a, of a book right or the start of a movie when you hear that like oh what is this this is real life and, you know, I'm going to start paraphrasing now and just read parts of it as we go through this pretty long article. But so kept secret at first because it was happening to CIA agents. Then it started happening. Now, five years later, there's reports now number in the hundreds in the BBC. And remember, this is the British Broadcasting Corporation doing their investigation of it has been told to span every continent, leaving even Antarctica. I haven't heard about that, but maybe so. I'm um, being this is nothing to joke about. So, you know, leaving a real impact on the U.S. ability to operate overseas. Undercovering the truth has now become a top U.S. national security priority. Uh, you think. So they go into like, why did it happen in Cuba first? And, you know, speculation that after decades of not being in Cuba in the mid to 2000 teens, that the United States started to move back in Cuba and, you know, who would have, who would that cause a problem with? Let's just leave it there. Russia, well, I mean, we, we get into it here. I'm not going to be not afraid to point out who our enemies are or who see themselves as our enemies and set themselves up to be. We should all be getting along. So a lot of um, experts have said, look, the only thing that can cause that, which basically is you're in a room, next thing you know, you start to hear the sound, it's intense pressure and, You know, one guy they describe here, he went to go be the, uh, I think, the station chief of Moscow, which is like the person responsible for CIA assets in a place, the station uh, station chief in in any particular city is, you know, that's the person who's responsible for everything that happened in that city. Station chief. You know, that's the station and he's a chief. Uh, Where is the guy? Now, you know, this, like I said, is a great story. This goes back, could have been happening since the 60s. You know, we know Russia has been pointing and shooting microwaves at our embassies and buildings for decades in Russia. Uh, you know, they, they have, they've been a little bit more advanced in their technology in terms of surveillance and also probably thinking of offensive weapons. There's even in this book, oh, here it is, in December 2017, Mark, I'm not going to butcher his name, sounds, it appears to be Greek, I may be wrong. Poly Mer and I seen a picture of him. It, I think I'm right. Poly Meropolos, Polis, Polopolos woke suddenly. In my last video about the NFTs, I think I, I slipped up and didn't say. Look, ain't no advice on nothing. Don't this ain't your. This ain't you. Ain't coming here for advice. Entertainment. Me explaining what I'm doing. Things I learn. Get excited about. Want to talk about. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna butcher words and. Uh, it is from our friend who considers himself a socialist friend. I wasn't even thinking of you. Our other friend, 
he thinks of himself as a socialist. Um, no, I'm joking with him. Both of y'all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to go back, you mispronounced this word at that point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got to be perfect with y'all. But that's fine. Hey, keep me to the high level, babies. I love it. But anyway, so this CIA officer, he was saying he was in this room. Um, a senior CIA officer was in town to meet his Russian counterpart. If I remember the story, unless this is a different guy, he was going to be the station chief. He wasn't just there to meet there. He was um, moving there to uh, to live in Russia and, and, and Moscow and, you know, work. My ears were ringing. My head was spinning. I felt like I was going to vomit. I couldn't stand up, he told the BBC. It was terrifying. It was a year after the first Havana cases, but the CIA medical office told him the symptoms didn't match the Cuban cases. And yeah, yeah this one, yeah, because he had been, he fought the CIA for years to say, look, I'm medically damaged by this. But they were like, oh, you know, maybe you maybe you just went crazy. This is like and then, you know, that becomes a big problem. Who in their right mind would go overseas on an assignment for the United States um, State Department? Or any of the intelligence agencies knowing that this is happening. And if you report it happening, you're told you're crazy and get out of here and, you know, get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, no, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't that doesn't cause the best people who want to take these positions. We have to protect these people in there. And if something happens, we have to do the, do right by them, period. So long story, you know, microwave weapons, it appears to be even the United States put together a medical science board who said they thought this year, I think this year or, or last year said, yeah, we think it. And this guy here, this is just anger me. This professor of neurology said after hearing and I bet he didn't interview when he said he saw the reports, he concluded they were a mass psychogenic condition when he saw the reports and I'm. He has long studied unexplained health conditions, and these people have a mass psychogenic condition. This this is a disinformation agent. This is somebody who's a paid shill for whatever agency want them to pipe down. I don't know who's paying his bills. In the case of Cuba and the mass of the embassy employees, particularly the CIA agents, were first affected. They certainly were in a stressful situation. Like CIA agents haven't been in stressful situations for decades. And now they're going to start thinking that they're hearing a loud buzzing noise and having neurologic symptoms afterwards. And not only that has happened on U.S. soil and it has happened. In his view, everyday symptoms like brain frog and dizziness are reframed by sufferers, media and health professionals as a syndrome. This is you got to be careful with someone who. They get to a point and think they know too much. They don't think they know too much. They think they know just the right amount. But they, in reality, you know, and, and you know, do the research first. Like, uh, you know, what happened last year with the pandemic um, and, and I don't want to go in with the pandemic. Let's be real. I see it too many times. People, you know, individuals, especially in medicine, and I mean anything, where, you know, sometimes these you, you've been doing it too long and you used to being right and you're not used to, you know, like I bet you this guy doesn't even understand the technology behind microwave weaponry and that China has been deploying it against India in their conflicts on their borders in the mountains. Man, get out of here. I don't call him a clown, but you know how I feel. Honk. He gets the honk. A December 2020 report by the U.S. National Academies of Science was a pivotal moment. Experts took evidence from scientists and clinicians, as well as eight victims. Uh, the panel looked, uh, da, 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 but concluded that directed high energy pulse microwaves were most likely responsible for some of the cases. So. That's where we at with it right now. And they, the, the, the Biden administration has signaled it's taking the issue seriously. CIA and State Department officials are giving advice on how to respond to incidents, including getting off the X, meaning if you feel it happen, start moving. Don't stay where you at, meaning physically moving away from the spot they feel they're getting hit. That's what they call it, too, getting hit. Oh, man, he got hit. You know about such and such, they got hit. Well, if you start to feel like you're getting hit, get off the X, because we think, you know, they... Slicing the beams in in different ways. So try to get away from that. 
Now they're thinking they find able to find markers in the blood that now the individuals are aware that when it's happening, they're being examined and they think they're finding evidence of uh, damage to the brain uh, tissue. My my guess, but you know, I mean, they didn't say specific details, but if you have to ask me, they show specific markers in the blood indicating brain injury, and so that definitely would, you know, you have to show something showing damage to your to your neurons. I want to prank them. Anyway. So, if if you didn't have didn't, if you didn't have enough to understand what was going on in the world, but it's, you know it's just maybe their secret. What is, what's the um, quiet wars? This is an expression about this. Se- quiet weapons for silent wars or some something, something like that. But quiet weapons for silent wars. Mm-hmm. Whoop, whoop. Quantum computers, some a little bit more exciting thinking about for the future. And I think we talked about, they're talking about they were able to entangle a, a three qubits together. But I thought we saw somewhere where someone was in, almost entangled far more. And we were saying, oh, you can probably scale that up to almost however millions of, of qubits can be entangled. Meaning, and we talked, remember in quantum, entang- quantum entanglement, that that means those Anything that is entangled, let's just use two, for example, two qubits, when they're entangled with one another, if any changes you make to one, they're reflected in both. And you can separate them, you know, theoretically, almost very vast differences that faster than light should be able to travel, but the communication between them still travel and entangle. So spooky action at a distance, as Einstein called it, entanglement. Very important that we always understand entanglement. Uh, so yeah, they found they have a three a, a tritanglement <laughs> between um, three qubits, and it's just a way to scale it up into uh, making a bigger computers because they think it will help with error correction. That's the big problem with quantum computing right now is that you don't know if the answer you'll get an answer from a quantum system, but you don't know if that's the right answer or not because the in the classical computers we have is built into the systems now error calculations and checking against yourself. And in quantum we're not don't quite understand how that concept works in the quantum sense. So it's been trial and error a bit. I'm far from anywhere like so you're not taking no advice from me, so you know better. You know I'm just blabbering anyway, so Maybe they can explain a little bit better than I'm saying it, but people who I'm thinking quantum engineers or quantum mechanics, mechanics specifically. Um, so, yeah, but that's the big problem is error correction that you get an answer, but you're not sure what it is. And now with these third qubits using uh, calculations, the fidelity was reaching 88 percent, meaning that the likelihood that that was the right answer was close to 88 percent now so you know of course we're gonna in the future to be once they figure and get everything moving correctly it'll be you know 0.99999 you know so see where we go with it but interesting quantum mechanics we still moving in the right directions maybe even this decade we will get some some quantum systems that actually are you know become Routine in our daily li- uh, life and use. Sophia will be mass produced this year. Sophia is the robot, if you haven't seen, made by Hanson Robotics that talks and, you know, you can have conversations with. And they're going to start mass producing. <laughs> Sophia, for what? Who knows? They say it's a social robot. So I'm thinking it's going to be rich people and they don't know how much they're going to sell it for or uh, when they're going to come off the assembly line, but they said it should start to produce in the first uh, plan of mass produce in the first half and uh, three other robots. In the, uh, I've seen a guy one as well. I, I guess he was created by Hanson Robotics as well. In the first half of 2021, sell thousands of the bots before the end of the year. So we may start seeing these in malls or I think more high end places initially that can afford to pay for. Who knows how much it's going to cost? But the AI in uh, Sophia is impressive. Should be cool. We'll see how that goes before we start rolling out the Tesla bots and the Boston Dynamic uh, robots themselves and Sarcos. A lot of companies, a lot of robotic companies. That's one of the exponential growth that we're looking at and investing in. So look to see if Hanson Robots. Remember, none of this is financial advice or medical advice or spiritual advice or Advice on if this should be advice. None of that is any of this. 
how DeFi can help the global economy recover. So talk a little bit about, you know, DeFi is blockchain based technology in the, in the form of finance where you're able to cut out. It does not depend on central financial intermediaries. It does not need a central one person to, to be the banker. So imagine if you ever played Monopoly that the, the game was set up where the uh, 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 computer was watching the game and automatically gave the money when it was supposed to or requested and took the money out of your account when it was supposed to. You didn't have to do anything but roll the dice and see what happens. You know, everything else was controlled and it was fair because I look, I used to play Monopoly with my friends. Some of the most cheatness individuals you've ever met on the planet. It, you know, that, that, look, I learned how to never get rarely get scammed. And we go do a big video about scams at some point, do a deep dive about scams because it's been it's nothing but scams in this NFT game. You got to be uh, mindful of that. Um, if anybody sends you an email or a text message or any link in Discord or anything you own, block them and, and delete it. That's what I do to any and everything. I don't click on nothing. Ain't nobody did. Today I got offered nine point something Ethereum, 14 Ethereum. I was like, if you was desperate, you would be just if an individual, you know, was 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 desperate, they would, you know, their mind don't your mind doesn't think rationally. So no one's offering you anything for free. But so going back to this, besides my uh, the most con artists of individuals that I grew up with, <laughs> uh, the DeFi market cap now is eight hundred billion. I think an article we read a couple of weeks ago talked about how they expect it to ten times within a year. Cardano is just going to be starting their DeFi, and I'm going to do a deep dive probably this week and about DeFi finance and how to go set up some mobile wallets, desktop wallets to lend money into a system and collect a, a tremendous amount of um, interest on your lending. And that's basically what it is. You become the bank. You lend money out. It could be as little as $100 and get back by the end of the month, 130 So now you lend, lend that 130 out and get back, you know, 164 you know, and just keep growing over time. Slow and steady win the race. So I just talked about the problem that the global systems collapsed because the banks were too big to fail. You remember, I'm put using quotation marks. You remember that that phrase we had heard. Um, and now DeFi is a blockchain system that puts the community first and provides financial services, which can include lending, or it says it here, sorry. Um, lending, blah, blah, blah. I'll get to it in a second. Oh, financial banking services, alternative savings, and peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms are some of the services that they're offering. Built on distributed networks that do not have a central authority. There is not one person who can say, I don't like you and I'm going to do this. Which, you know, no individual government organizations, they go by community members. So the, everything is benefit from payment, transparency, and accessibility. So the thing about DeFi, even China's releasing their coin, they're talking about financial services where investors have locked billions of dollars, process transactions faster, um, and they, they have also stable coins in there. So say you, like, I need $10,000, but I want to loan this money, and I don't want to be, you know, put it in Ethereum or, or Cardano or Dogecoin, and it go... And when I need to go get it now, it's seven thousand, or hey, it's twenty thousand, and I don't want to pull it out just yet because I didn't need it just now. But it's twenty thousand. Should I pull it out? I don't even think about that. That's why you go into these platforms and you lend money in stable coins. So Tether, USDC, Binance Coin, whatever it may be, a stable coin. You lend that out. So your ten thousand dollars stay ten thousand dollars. You know, you don't get the don't get the price gains of the market as well. Neither the depreciation of the drops. So, but it's a stable coin peg to the dollar, the euro, the yen, or uh, the yuan, and you get interest on your stable coin. So that's where a lot of people are getting really nice gains on DeFi. We're gonna do a deep dive on that, like we did on NFTs recently. The majority of adults, 61%, it is, this is a lie. This is where they, um, 
that's not exactly 61 percent you'll see in a second of u.s adults do not oppose bitcoin as legal tender survey shows majority of adults in u.s do not oppose making bitcoin legal tender survey shows they talked to a total of 49 i'm sorry 4912 adults in the country participated in this study and asked do you support or oppose the u.s so they got strongly support some would support some would oppose strongly oppose and don't know and they added up strongly support somewhat support and don't know to get you to 61 i'm like nah just ignore the don't knows that's a 30 or look at it as a third of the country have yet to form an opinion on what this means so if you think you're late to the game and you know we don't and they have some breakdown of the age groups as well but some of it's redundant so you don't even know if they even put the right numbers there but the the the, the person who wrote the article but and you you know let's just let's just assume that it's somewhat representative of the United States okay just you know I'm not supposed to assume anything I agree 100 percent but just for purposes of um <laughs> of of just you know entertainment today like you know we all like we always do around this time so strongly support some with support are at 27 percent and some would oppose strongly oppose is at 39 percent strongly oppose is greatly opposed and i'm guessing this is the an older more traditional crowd who think this new money is gonna it's all stupid y'all giving money for pictures of rocks but 34 percent don't have an idea so but people are interested in and possibly supporting and the question was would you support or oppose the u.s making bitcoin a legal form of currency that would mean businesses would accept bitcoin in exchange for goods and services in addition to continuing to accept the u.s dollar so we can guess who said what bitcoin is not dead yet the bitcoin network logs seventh thousandth seven yeah, 700,000, 700, 700,000 block. So what does that mean? We talked that when the, when uh, Satoshi Nakamoto first put his code up on the internet for other people and started to mine a block, that the, that's the Genesis block. That when a code first went up on the network, start running. And then in 10 minutes, give or take, and we'll get to that second, you start the next block. But the first block and the second block are embedded inside each other. So just like... Uh, you know how you overlap a piece of paper? That's how the blocks are. So they overlap like a chain. That's where you get the block chain from. And so you can't go in there and take out the Genesis block and change and do stuff because it's embedded in the second block, which is embedded in the third block, which is embedded in the fourth block. So you can't go and change any of the blocks because they're embedded in space and time in the previous, in the, um, in the, um, the block that comes after it. So that's what makes it so beautiful and so uniquely difficult to attack. And they mine, Bitcoin has mined a 700,000 700, block on Saturday, marking a major milestone for a network whose detractors claim had died 428 times since 2009. It took Bitcoin, now this is important, remember this. It took Bitcoin less than two years to produce a hundred thousand more blocks after reaching the six hundred thousand milestone on October eighteenth, two thousand nineteen. At the time of the last one hundred thousand, so at the six hundred thousand blockstone milestone, last time it was at six hundred thousand, six hundred thousand blocks at that milestone. The Bitcoin price was worth less than eight thousand dollars. Today, now was one is worth over forty five thousand. So let's see where we're at when we get to the 800,000th block. About 90% of coins have been mined. On average, new blocks are generated every 10 minutes. Although production is impacted by mining difficulty, Bitcoin mining difficulty is adjusted roughly every two weeks, a process that resets how hard it is for miners to mine the digital asset. At the current pace of block production, the final Bitcoin will be mined around the year 2140. Can you imagine when that day comes? <laughs> and so they have a um, a quote from Hal Finley. He died in 2014. Um, he was one of the very early pioneers in mining Bitcoin. 
every day that goes by and Bitcoin hasn't collapsed due to legal or technical problems, that brings new information to the market. It increases the chance of Bitcoin's eventual success and justifies a higher price. Amen. So Bitcoin is doing well. The, the network is strong. The market is strong. You know, wherever you may be at in life today, always remember there's a better tomorrow. If you make it as such, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, even yourself and yourself will constantly tell you how what I'm saying is garbage. And that's not the truth. And those are lies. I'm telling you, you can have an incredible life. Make it so. I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.